In previous lesson, we have learned how liquid steel is made from hard metal, which was produced from blast furnace process. In this lesson, we'll discuss about new steel making, which is called secondary refining, which actually uses liquid steel produced from beige auction furnace, but the liquid steel is further cleaned and be transformed into more stored form for the next process, casting. And also, in this lesson, we'll also discuss the other type of steel making route, which is called electric arc furnace process. And we'll also discuss about different type of steel making process for stainless steel. This figure shows process overview of whole steel making plant. And we have covered the raw material, iron making, and hard metal treatment and steel making so far. Then in this lesson, we'll discuss about steel, the secondary fine process, which is about here. Actually, steel produced from this converter or beige auction furnace is delivered into this secondary refining plant. And liquid steel produced from this beige auction furnace is further treated. Then this liquid steel will be transferred into the casting plant. Then let's look at the purpose of secondary refining process. The figure shown on the right hand side shows the chemistry of steel depending on its process. The vertical axis shows the progress of process which has been treated so far. And the horizontal axis shows the chemistry or chemical composition of the steel which has been experienced so far. First, this is iron ore which contains lots of oxygen inside. Suppose we have every two or three as ore, then it contains about 38% of oxygen inside. Then it undergoes iron making root, then it is transformed into hard metal. Its oxygen content has been lower significantly, so almost there is no oxygen remained in hard metal. However, the carbon concentration in the hard metal increased up to 4 or 45%. Then this hard metal is treated through the steel making route using beige ocean furnace. The hard metal is now transformed into the steel. Its carbon concentration becomes very, very low. However, at the same time, the ocean concentration in liquid steel increases about a few hundred ppm. When this liquid steel is made, this steel cannot be used directly. It's necessary to treat this liquid steel one more time through secondary refining process. The purpose of doing secondary refining process is first to decrease the oxygen concentration, which has been increased up to a few hundred ppm, typically 5 to 600 ppm. We need to decrease oxygen level first. Then during the decreasing oxygen, we face new material called inclusions, which is a small particle of oxide. We call this as inclusion. This should be decreased or this should be modified. And also, we need to remove another impurity inside liquid steel. And we need to also change concentration of liquid steel by adding alloying elements. So, the topic shown here is the love, the issues, what should be done during the second refining process. First, liquid steel is tapped from converter. Then, the liquid steel may be reheated, which is suitable for the casting process. And during the reheating process, the agitation inside liquid steel may be carried out. And at the same time, we need to refine liquid steel in terms of chemistry. So we need to deoxidize liquid steel, and we also need to desulfurize liquid steel. And as a result of the oxidation process, once non-metal inclusions are formed, then this liquid inclusion should be removed or modified. And some other type of impurity, like nitrogen or hydrogen, may enter into liquid steel during tapping process. This is the gaseous element, and this should be removed from liquid steel through degassing process. And depending on steel product types, Certain type of alloying elements must be added into liquid steel. This is alloying. 
once chemical compositions and temperatures are well adjusted, then this is sent to Tundish for content casting process, which will be discussed in next lesson. In this slide, there are various types of the equipment which is used for refining liquid steel. The purpose of the refining is shown here. We may need to alloy liquid steel. We may need to degas liquid steel to take nitrogen or hydrogen out of liquid steel. And during this second refining process, temperature of liquid steel gradually decreases. If this is too low, then it is not good for casting process. So sometimes we need to reheat liquid steel in order to have suitable temperature for casting. And also during the oxidation process, non-metallic oxide type inclusions are formed. Then this inclusion needs to be removed or modified. All these fossils shown in this slide are used for this kind of the purposes. In the middle, we see two types of facilities. The left hand called ladle arc furnace, or simply we call LF. Right hand side, we call RH degasser. The LF furnace is used to reheat temperature of liquid steel. This is electrode, and it causes electric arc. The arcing is done at the surface of liquid steel, then this part of liquid steel get enough energy to increase temperature. Then by stirring liquid steel using argon gas bubble, liquid steel is well agitated and temperatures are evenly distributed. Right hand side, we see RH together. This is variety of purposes, but most important one is degassing. The upper part, this is used to make the inside chamber to be vacuumed. So this is connected to vacuum pump. And liquid steel is circulated through this route. And gaseous elements in the liquid steel, like nitrogen or hydrogen, is well evacuated into this chamber. And more importantly, if we like to decrease carbon level inside liquid steel, then carbon may form the CO gas, and this is also evacuated. And this fossil is also is used to circulate this liquid steel, so liquid steel is well homogenized. The other type of the facilities, this is called powder injection. The lens is put inside liquid steel, and since this lens has many, many holes, through this hole, argon gas and some flux are added into liquid steel and well agitated. The rule shows wire feeder. Certain type of alloying elements or some other flux is provided through wire injection and it is delivered in the middle of liquid steel or even bottom of liquid steel. Then this is well mixed by this argon gas. Right hand side, this is called combustion adjustment by sealed argon bubbling, ocean blowing. Simply it's called cas obi. We have certain type of hopper, and the oxygen is blowing here, and also aluminum is added here. So in this place, aluminum reacts with the oxygen gas, then it forms alumina with a lot of heat. So this is another type of heating facility inside, then Again, this liquid steel is well estated by argon gas, so temperature is evenly distributed. The last one is called vacuum tank degasser, or VTD. The function of this VTD is very similar to RH. The ladle containing liquid steel is put inside vacuum tank, and the gaseous element is well evacuated. Then, about the refining topics, let's look at two important ones. First one is the inclusions and the oxidation. Second one is degassing. The oxidation is the one of the most important the parts in the refining of liquid steel. Once liquid steel is tapped from BOF, it contains significant amount of oxygen, about 
500 ppm. If this liquid steel is cast directly, then oxygen solubility in solid steel is quite low. Most of these oxygen will evolve in forms of the CO gas by forming by the forming CO gas through these reactions. But since steel is solidified, this CO gas cannot escape out of steel, so it stays inside solid steel product. This is called pinhole. This is the significant defect. Therefore, we must decrease oxygen level before the steel is cast. There are several types of deoxidation method. We may deoxidize liquid steel by adding ferromanganese alloy that it forms MN oxide. Or we may deoxidize liquid steel using ferrous silicon alloy. Then silicon forms SiO2, or silicon reacts with oxygen and manganese inside liquid steel, then it forms manganese silicate oxide, which is typical liquid at steel making temperatures. But most typically, we use aluminum to deoxidize liquid steel. It is very strong deoxidizer and it's also cheap. By adding aluminum, we can form alumina, then oxygen level in liquid steel could decrease very low level up to just few ppm. This is quite effective. However, there is some price to pay using aluminum. It forms alumina as a result of the oxygen process, then it causes significant trouble during the process and even for the product. It stays in liquid steel, and if the liquid steel is cast, then this inclusion stay in steel product, it becomes defect. It may appear on the surface of steel product, then this steel product becomes very, very less useful. If this inclusion stays in wire product, very thin wire product, then it causes breakage. Inclusion also forms crack inside steel product. So this inclusion should be removed during steel making process. However, removal of inclusion perfectly is almost impossible. Size of inclusions are very, very small, even below micrometer. So if it is not possible to remove all inclusions, then we may try to modify property of inclusions not to be so harmful to steel product and process. The other important topic of secondary refining process is degassing. There are three elements to be removed in degassing process. The first two are nitrogen and hydrogen, which may enter into liquid steel from air. And the third one is carbon remained in liquid steel. In RH degasser, what is done is liquid steel is circulated through this route, and this side is evacuated, so pressure inside chamber is, becomes low. Then nitrogen or hydrogen may be easily evaporated, and carbon meets oxygen, then it becomes CO, then CO gas is also evaporated. How liquid steel is circulated here? In this part, there are two loops for liquid steel. And in one loop, argon gas is supplied. Then apparent density on the left-hand side becomes lower than right-hand side. And since this is part is evacuated, the light part of liquid steel goes up, and this moves through this route. In this way, liquid steel is well circulated here. During this circulation, gaseous elements will be easily evacuated here. And also, if necessary, the oxygen is supplied here with aluminum. Then this aluminum also reacts with oxygen to form alumina, but also it causes a lot of heat. So this RH facility is also used to reheat the liquid steel. It has very variety of functions.